Ingo Swan, you know who Ingo Swan is? Very famous remote viewer, did a lot of stuff for the intelligence community, lived to regret it. But I was at his home up in New York um, some years ago, and um, just a wonderful man, brilliant. And you know, he did a lot of work with SRI, Stanford Research International, um, and DARPA, and um, Army Intelligence, and CIA. And they were experimenting and training people during the Cold War to be able to use consciousness to spy on the Soviet Union. And the Soviet Union was doing the same thing. Um, and everyone in the intelligence community at a certain clearance level knows about this, by the way. This is nothing, you know, all that secret. It's hidden in plain sight. Um, but what was interesting to me was that, you know, he regretted that he ended up being used that way eventually. But what he and I would talk about together is, is the fact that every single human being has the ability to do this. They just don't do anything to help develop it. So it's like, you don't start out in kindergarten doing quantitative analysis and calculus. There's a process, right? It's the same thing with these capabilities. Um, you know, I bench press 410 pounds. But you don't start out that way, you rip your you know, pectoralis muscles in half. So, you, you, so everything is an iterative learning, developing process of skill and knowledge and experience that builds on itself over time. Most people just never take the time to sit down two, three times a day, go into a quiet meditative state, and then practice the ability to intend to know. And I call it the intend to know because it's not brute will, it's quietly going into consciousness and then saying, I want to know this, or I want to see this place and let it open very subtly. It's a very subtle, um, integrative process as opposed to a brutal intellectual one. My own approach to this is a very Vedic one. And as you know, the ancient Vedas, people conflate the Vedas with Hinduism. They have really very little to do with each other. The, the, the Vedic knowledge predates any known. It's a philosophy. But Vedanta is really the study of consciousness in its singularity. And that's, of course, from that, the concept of the human experiencing that state, which is called samadhi, or nirvana. Um, but there's this misunderstanding in the public that only certain adepts, you know, that you have to lay on a bed of nails for 30 years and, you know, do all kinds of crazy stuff to be able to have this happen. It simply isn't true. Uh, every single human being can learn to sit quietly, go into a meditative state using whatever works for you. I use a type of mantra meditation. Um, it can also be a breathing technique with mantra. There are a lot of approaches to it. The key thing is for the mind to become quiet, centered, and allow it to become very deeply centered. And at the point where all thought and awareness of everything disappears, but you're not asleep, you're still awake, it may just be a flash, that's the samadhi state. It's the experience of pure consciousness without differentiation. That's the state of pure non-locality. At that point, you are omnipresent. You're everywhere. 